Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick page, basically emptying your mind, um, abstract mark making. This is what I do when I just want to play in my journal but I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. So I go in with my paints, just choose a colour and paint it out in three spots on my page. You can see I'm using quite a wide brush to do this and I'm blending everything together as well. So I'm starting off using sort of like colours. I've got carnation, I've got some blushing on my page. I haven't um, cleaned off my brush because why would you waste time doing that? And then I'm going in and um, blending the colours together. So this is marine over the top and now I'm putting in a little bit of a light blue just again to sort of mix it together um, gives a little bit of shading um, my secret trick to this is the not cleaning of the brush because you've got some of that original color on your brush it sort of helps it all blend together somewhat so I've noticed that usually I will do this in three um, areas on my page but um, I got slightly carried away and um, went into a fourth area. You can see I'm just rubbing a little bit away with my wet wipe and then putting some extra paint over. So if you really don't like it, just paint another colour over it. You know, you're not going to ruin it. It's, it's how things go. So once I'd finished doing that, then I went in with some contrasting colours to add some mark making. And my mark making basically consists of putting out some paint, getting some different size paint brushes and just making marks on my page until I run out of paint. So that's exactly what I've done here. I've got a flat brush, I think it's like half an inch. Um, that's cheddar over the top and I'm just making some marks. You can see now I've changed the size of my brush and I'm doing exactly the same. I suppose the key to doing this type of mark making is that you need to overlap your mark making and not to contain it within a particular colour. So what I mean by that is that yellow, I didn't just do the yellow on the blue sections of my page. It went into the pink sections. Um, with the red or the fuchsia colour, you know, I haven't contained it to the pink sections. I've let it lead all over the page. So it's really, really important when you're doing things like this, particularly mic making, um, don't try and contain it in a box. Let it naturally sort of blend things together. And it's a really great way of, you know, if you've got a really harsh edge, put a few blobs of mic making over the top of it. That's going to hide it. Um, and the other important thing is um, overlap your marks as well. So you can see there with the turquoise that I have just drawn lines but I'm putting over the, the yellow marks, I'm putting over the red marks, I'm leading it across the page, I'm making sure it's a bit random and abstract but it's, you know, it's got this sort of path and it's blending everything together. And I'm using the same sorts of marks but I'm varying the sizes so, you know, I've got those bigger lines of the turquoise, I'm doing exactly the same thing with the white except I'm using a much finer pen and much finer marks. So you get this sort of really textured area on your page um, rather than you know the big bold marks on the page. A lot of the colors I'm using are very similar they're just different shades of so you know I had a blue on the page so I've got the turquoise I've had well, I didn't really have the yellow the yellow is standing out very much as a contrasting color on this page but you know I had the reds on the page so or the pinks so by having that fuchsia on the page it does kind of blend in with the background it's got a, a reason sort of for being there on the page the other way of making marks really really easy on your page is just to splatter over your page you can see there just by putting some white splatter it sort of unifies the page you've got this random marks over the background that you didn't need to think about but it sort of blends everything together now if you're doing um, splatter on the background it is particularly if you're going to put more mark making over the top, which I'm going to do with some paint pens, it is quite important to have those um, areas dry before you continue, um, which can take a little while because those little dots of um, ink are obviously raised up. There's quite a bit in the little puddles, so it takes a little while. If you get really impatient, you can always sponge it off with a um, paper towel. Just trying to think. So I'm now going in with some black ink. So this is a, a black acrylic drawing ink. 
I love using this when I'm doing this type of work because I get some really beautiful bold lines without very much issue. Yes, you can get um, really thick um, Posca paint pens, but um, I just love the intensity of the um, straight ink on the page too. And again, you can sort of go in and do a little bit of splatter too. So you can see I've got, you know, a combination of those really thick, bold lines, and then I've got that really fine splatter in the background. So again, I'm going to dry this off. I didn't do a fantastic job of drying this off, and you'll see that when I start to put the white pen over the top and sort of bled into it somewhat. So be patient. And again, you don't need to be like me if you don't need to do everything at once. I get onto a track and keep going you know there is nothing to stop you putting this down going on to something else and coming back to this a few hours later I'm just impatient and once I start something I like to finish it so you can see on the page you know where it's a little bit shiny is where it's not particularly dry I decided to start drawing onto this page with my white paint pen it worked okay for the first bit and then on that second swirl you can see it sort of disappeared somewhat so be patient. I find that putting the white lines over the black just helps highlight it which sounds a bit silly because those lines were so big and bold to begin with but it just adds a little bit of extra detail and interest to those lines um, and it's just a really quick and easy way to, to add something else to your page. I wanted to put some words in this just to have a little bit of a focus on them. But I didn't want it to be huge on the page I have to say though because I, I, I really like the background. So I chose um, this part of the stencil, listen to your, own, you listen to your inner voice. So um, if you are not confident in using a stencil like that um, without getting paint everywhere, just use some washi tape to mask off the areas you don't want the paint to go through, <clears throat> um, which will help really, really well. I'm then going in with my black pen just to it's not highlight I suppose give a shadow to those letters just to pop them out from the background so it's not particularly dark on the page it's quite translucent but it gives enough of an impression that you can still see it on the page I then decided to do a little bit of journaling on the page just why I, about why I chose that listen to your inner voice and what that meant to me on this page and that's it really it's really really quick and easy it's a great way to empty your mind because there's not much thinking to it you've just got your paints you've got some different paint sized um, paint brushes and some paint pens and you can just do as much or as little as you want to this page to make it your own so I hope you have a go at doing some mark making it's a great way to sort of stretch your abilities and particularly doing a page like this is a good way to explore what marks you like on a page or what brushes or what materials make a really good mark for you that you like using so um, they're, they're great practice pages to do as well. Until next time, bye for now.